Hi, yes, it's Bitcoin hardware wallet time again. We've got the brand spanking new Trezor Model T. Um, I pre-ordered this. You can't actually buy it yet. If you miss the pre-order, it's actually not on sale yet. But um, anyway, I thought I'd check it out. It is the upgrade to the original uh, Trezor one here, which I have reviewed, and I'll link it in down below. And at the end of this video, I've done a teardown and a review of this. And also, I've done a video on the Ledger Nano S, uh, basically comparing these two and going through the setup. Uh, by the way, since that video for the Ledger Nano S, um, I haven't really had any issues with it. So I've been using this uh, quite extensively for some coins that the Trezor does not support. And that's hopefully one of the things addressed in the new Trezor. Model T is that uh, supports more coins and it's got a few extra uh, nicer bells and whistles and it's basically um, effectively the upgrade. Ah, crypto. Yes, I do like crypto and yes, I do support accept donations in various cryptocurrencies. Thank you very much for those who uh, do donate via crypto anonymous and without government influence winner. Um, I accept uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin. Bitcoin Cash, Dash, Zcash, Ripple, Ethereum Classic, Cardano, and Redcoin. And in. Anyway, let's go. And just a word again on cryptocurrencies. If you are playing in the cryptocurrency market, don't keep your coins on the crypto exchanges because they can be hacked. There's been huge hacks, you know, like hundreds of millions of dollars hacks of the Bitcoin exchanges. If you keep your coins on these hardware wallets, they're safe. So they're definitely worth invest in in one of these puppies if you're after the cheapest solution the ledger nano s is probably the go um because the trezor was always more expensive and the trezor model t is more expensive again i can't remember how much i paid for this uh, maybe it was like 180 australian dollars or something it's probably one of the the most expensive hardware solutions out there anyway let's check it out it uh, supports more coins supposedly eight of them but we'll check it out do it so it comes in a spunky case oh the safe place for your coins. <gasps> unboxing for those who like the unboxing. Wanky magnet time. Let's open it up. Ta-da! There it is. Oh, well, let's get started. One, two, three. Go ahead, connect your Trezor. Open Trezor. Start in your web browser. Follow instructions. So, hello. Whoa. It's got a wanky magnet in it. Isn't that neat? So I go, like you can like mount it somewhere. Wow. Okay, they've gone to town. And some of the basic differences are a it's bigger. Um, B it's got the bigger screen on it and it's a touch screen. So before the old model, you had to actually uh, it, it got the randomized pin. Uh, code which was quite good but you had to enter the pin code on the computer this one you enter the pin code on the hardware device itself on the touch screen so the data is not sent over the interwebs at all so technically that is more secure to enter the code on here but i never really had a problem here it randomized the keypad it really was quite uh, nice but this one you do it on it i still don't think that's very big to you know especially if you've got big digits my fingers aren't very big but still that looks uh you know bit small for a keypad anyway we'll find out holographically sealed for our protection and the other big difference is is that it has a USB-C connection on it as opposed to the micro USB and I always felt I even though I love micro USB I don't really have any other USB-C uh, products but USB-C is much more reliable robust connector than the uh, micro USB and I always felt oh geez I've, I know I've got a, a maximum number of insertions on this thing and oh, I don't want to wear it out so eh. anyway by the way if you're wondering why that one looks like shit is because I tore it apart and I um, melted the case back together after I tore it apart so I'll take my holographic sticker off and it's going to leave the residue behind yeah there you go it's not great, is it? But, I, you know, that's a nice security measure. And only ever buy these hardware wallets from an authorized approved distributor. Don't buy them from some one hung low store or some shop at the Shenzhen market. Definitely only get them from approved source. That stops um, modified hardware because in theory it's possible for people to sell hacked modified hardware that actually reports 
back. It's uh, harder with the uh, ledger than it is with the Trezor, but it's still possible. So just buy it from a reputable source. Well, the other good thing about the Trezor is that it's open hardware, as opposed to the Ledger and others which are not open hardware. This one, you can actually, um, in theory, you can build your own. But if we go over here and have a look, they haven't, it looks like they have not re released the hardware yet. I've asked them on Twitter um, when they plan on releasing the schematic and the PCB file and everything else and the bill of materials and everything else for this. But uh, yeah, they haven't, it's all to do. But technically this hasn't been released yet. So, okay, fair enough. So if we just have a look here, next generation hardware wallet. There you go, Bitcoin, Litecoin, uh, Ethereum, Dash, Ethereum Classic, Zcash, and NEM. It would have been nice to have some others, but anyway, um, yeah, okay, it's better than it was before. Um, it, one of the things with the original one is that the Ethereum, um, it technically supported Ethereum, but you had to use My Ether Wallet, uh, which is an online, like a web-based um, thing to do that, and it always worked very well. So I do actually use my Trezor to do some Ethereum stuff, but um, yeah, it's just through my Ether wallet. So if it's now got native support on the actual hardware, then winner. That's what I'm after. And it should have the same user interface, which is, I think, much better than the uh, Ledger one. I just like the Trezor interface. It works really well. And interactive touchscreen, take it anywhere. Improve security. Yes, they do apparently have the pin, which now supports zero, because it didn't support the number zero before. <laughs> anyway. Let's get to it. Let's plug it in. And yes, that little uh, magnetic thing is actually a adhesive-backed hanger. So you can, like, stick it somewhere and have your Trezor. It's kind of cute and wankery. Okay. And yes, you get a USB-C cable with it. Good thing about USB-C is it is more robust, um, and you can plug it in uh, either direction. Nice, you don't have to worry about it. So that's a good step up from the original. All right, so I just plugged it in. Welcome. Go to Trezor.io slash start. Let's do that. Okay, so choose your device to continue. The Model T, you ripper. Let's go. Trezor beta wallet. Yeah, no wackers. Okay, so it's only got beta wallet uh, support. Connect Trezor and check four devices. So let's check four devices, shall we? No wackers. Let's do that. It's time to install the device. Firmware is shipped without firmware installed to ensure that you get started with the latest features straight away. Fair enough. Okay. Install firmware. Yep. There we go. It's downloading. Installing firmware. Now, I guess one question to ask is that, well, is it possible for like a man in the middle attack here? You know, if you connect to the wrong website or whatever, I guess in th and it could download, you know, some hacked firmware, I guess in theory it's possible. That's why you always go to the official Trezor website. Please wait. It says to go to uh, slash start, but look, the progress bar here hasn't finished yet. Please wait for it to reboot. You may also need to check for devices. Geez, that's not great, is it? It should have automatically detected that it had finished installing the firmware and taken us to start. It's not the best thing, but I guess it's in there, so I'll follow the instructions on the screen, shall I? Loading, loading, loading. Okay, let's just let's just connect. Unknown device from Interbiometrics. What? What on earth is Interbiometrics? I get it, it, no, I don't wish to connect to an unknown device from Interbiometrics. What the? Have I got something else connected to my computer? Into bio chroming requires access. Oh, and was updated. What are these new permissions? Reddit. <laughs> That's a Reddit post. Come on. Showbox app. What? Download. No. No, no, no. Piss off. What is this rubbish? Unbelievable. Well, there you go. It looks like that is legit. Um, But somebody had to... Trezor had to reply on their Twitter account. Yes, that is expected. Trezor 2, which is the Trezor Model T, um, uses vendor ID of Interbiometrics uh, PIDs, uh, more info. Un unbelievable. There needs to be more transparency there. 
that did not instill a lot of confidence in me when I popped up with interbiometrics. Okay, so let's let's do it again. Let's check for devices. That's not good. Welcome to Trezor. We're inside the wallet. Create a new wallet. Okay, we're in like Flynn. I guess we, you know, it looks totally legit. Comes from their Twitter account. Um, and but yeah, that's that's not good. They need to <laughs> they need to be transparent about. It. Maybe there is a uh, this is their February update. The user interface. March 1st is their latest update. That just wasn't explained. So, bit of a fail there. All right, let's create new wallet. Preparing your Trezor. Needs backup. Why does our Trezor already need backup when we are just starting it for the first time? Your Trezor is ready. But first, let's get familiar with the various features. Use labeling. Add transaction comments, rename accounts and hidden addresses. Uh, verify. Address authenticity on your Trezor. Yes, that is one of the advantages having the large screen on the Trezor is that it can display the full address. So when you're um, sending your coins, you know exactly where they're going to and you can verify. So there you go. All right, continue to wallet. All right, we're in Lake Flynn. There you go. Great. We're into our wallet. We're connected. We can do Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin Gold, Dash, Litecoin, Zcash, Ethereum, and Ethereum Classic. Okay, let's go protect your coins from the unexpected. Start now. Your Trezor is not backed up. How to create a backup in three minutes? How do we back up our Trezor? Four, you should know your recovery seed is the backup key. Yep. Okay, create backup. Name your device. Set the pin lock. See. No, Ethereum wallet, it's my Ether wallet still. It doesn't have native support for Ethereum. That's a shame. Anyway, um, yeah, like I expected this to be part of the setup process, but they've called it backup, which is, I, okay, you know, it's called backup. I don't necessarily like that uh, term, but yeah, because we haven't set up our pin lock or anything, haven't set up anything on this yet, yet we're into our Trezor wallet and we and, and we have our account but it looks like I can't do anything on the account until we've created the backup so okay fair enough I just don't like the way they've sort of labeled that but it looks like yeah we can't use it until we set it up and of course we have to set it up I understand continue confirm action on your Trezor device Never make a digital copy of your recovery seed and never upload it on the line. I understand. So I'm going to hit. There you go. Do not disconnect device. These are my seed keys. So I'm going to write these down. I'm not going to show you any more. Um, but these are my recovery seed keys. And we can swipe them down. And yes, we do get our recovery. And we should get our recovery seed card. In here, the recovery seed card. So you uh, write down your seed keys on here. And of course, if somebody gets your seed recovery sheet, they have access to your coins. They do not need to physically have this. So if you keep this in your wallet and you lose your wallet and somebody finds it in the street, they can instantly use this recovery seed to either get another Trezor or another compatible uh, software or hardware wallet compatible with that um, this uh, recovery seed format and they can steal all your coins they're theirs right so don't keep this in your wallet. this is more important than this you can lose this okay and it's got the pin number they can't get in and you can set more than a pin number you can set um, various layers of security on this so even if you physically lose this or somebody steals it from you um, then they can't, it's very difficult for them to actually get the, you know, to get access to your coins. But this, it's like five minutes and they're done. They like, stole all your coins. So this is more valuable than this. And the reason that they use words like this is A, they're easy to write down, easy to remember, and B, you can't really goof them up. So even if you wrote down the word, broccoli wrong or grain or fly 
wrong on your recovery sheet, it, it's going to be generally pretty obvious that you got the spelling wrong on it. So it's better than just a you know random 64 digits or whatever and uh, hex characters or something like that. So um, all your hardware wallets do this and it's very good. And it's so it's really difficult to goof up right into down. But you can, just be very careful. This is a one-shot deal, by the way. The other thing I'll say is that the screen isn't particularly bright. I mean, I've got, you know, a um, big glass window for outside next to me, so there's a fair lot of light coming in here, and I, you know, I can read it, but it's just, it, it's a little bit dull. So, it you know, maybe in really bright light conditions, it might be hard to read. I don't know. And the other good thing about hardware wallets like these that generate the seed internally and generate the seed words um, internally and display them internally is that even if your computer can be infested with all sorts of spyware and all sorts of adware and all sorts of crap, doesn't matter what they do, unless somebody's got a physical camera over your shoulder watching you what's on the screen of this thing, there's no way for anyone to know what your recovery seed is. As long as someone's not looking over your shoulder, that's different to software wallets where you have to be absolutely certain that your phone's not infected. Don't do crypto on your phone. Just don't. Um, <laughs> or the security vulnerabilities are insane. Or on your PC, you've got to make sure you've got a clean PC. And how do you make sure of that? Well, you know, that's really quite difficult. Um, they, they don't have key loggers or anything else in their display capture uh, malware or something like that uh, to steal your recovery seed. So that's the advantage of hardware wallets. And now, after you've written down all those as an extra step, it asks you to randomly, I don't think it goes through and verifies them all, but it allows you to uh, at least uh, type in the fourth word and verify that you've actually done this step. Because it's really important. As I said, this is a one-shot deal. Because the last thing you want to do is couple of years down the track when oh you've lost your hardware wallet uh you know or it's it's been damaged or destroyed or whatever and you want to recover your coins and you've written down your recovery seed wrong well <laughs> tough titties okay after i verified two words we're in like flynn but it looks like we haven't gone through our name your device i mean it's just got my trezor on here i'm gonna touch it can I touch it to complete the action on your Trezor device? I have. I've completed the action. Do not disconnect device. It's, it's just on that screen. <laughs> just like small things during the uh, setup that are just annoying. Like, I've created my backup. I've written it down. I've done exactly what they select. Uh, retype them on the screen. And it hasn't progressed. Fail. Setup fail. I don't think I have any option now but to disconnect my device, even though it says do not disconnect device. Create a backup in three minutes. Um, change label. Pin protection disabled. Okay, it looks like I'm just going to have to do it manually. The automated process didn't work. Unless I did something dumb there. I don't know. So I would just call it Model T. Change it. And fail to change the device label. Name your device Trezor in one minute. Security reasons. Yes, confirm. Hello, McFly. My screen is blank. Nah, I'm going to have to disconnect this. This is a fail. Connect Trezor and check for devices. Unknown device from Interbiometrics. Come on. Name your Trezor in one minute. Please wait for the device to load. It's loaded. It's on the screen. Continue. Of course, you should give it something better than, you know, Model T. Give it something unique that you can... Uh, you know, actually, you could engrave on the back of it or something like that. Um, a lot of people do that. There you go. Do you really want to change the label to Model T, it's asking, and you press the green. The touchscreen seems to work okay. It's like a... No. <laughs> As I said, I'm pressing the green button. I'm, I'm, I'm pressing the green button, but nothing's happen, happening. I, I was just praising the screen, and now, like, it's not working. Fail. I'm going to have to totally forget my device. Check for devices. Takes an unknown device. Connect. It's dodgy as. There it is again. Hey! It worked this time. 
you chose a wonderful name. Thank you. No, I didn't. That was a piss poor name, and you should have known that. <laughs> Everyone's going to call it Model T. <laughs> Choosing a strong pin. Okay. Now, are you ready to set a new pin, it says. You bet you I am. So I'm not going to show you. And uh, But, you know, we now have the zero on the keypad, which the old one didn't because the screen wasn't big enough. Um, and as I said, the old one, you could not enter the pin number on this. You had to do it on the PC and it would randomize the uh, keypad, which, which I had no problems with. I thought it was kind of groovy. Um, so I'm going to choose a pin. And it's going to ask me to re-enter my pin. And you'll notice that it is... Has it randomized? Yep, I think it's randomized that keypad yet again. Awesome. So that you can't tell, you know, nobody, uh, like, you know, fingerprint marks or a thermal um, sensor to see where you've put your hand, fingers or whatever. It, it just randomizes the keypad every time. So that's good. And we're in like Flynn. Model T, good job. Your pin is set. There you go. Awesome, you're all set. Trezor is ready to go. So there you go. Um, that wasn't painful at all. Um, but it's just buggy. There's a few bugs in there. Just like I initially set up the Ledger wallet and I had a few issues and bugs and had to reconnect and do all sorts of things. I don't know. It doesn't instill a lot of confidence, but I, you know, I've had absolutely no problems with these after I set them up and I wouldn't expect anything, uh, any problems with the Model T now that I've uh, set it up as well. So yeah, just a few niggles. And one thing you might have noticed during that setup is that the recovery seed uh, card is only 12 words. This is different to the 24 words that they had on the existing uh, Trezor and the Ledger Nano S as well. Technically not as secure. So why they've done that? I don't know. Bueller? Bueller? All right, so now we can actually play around with this thing. We've got our connected device here. Uh, you could presumably have more than one connected device. I could plug in my existing one. Um, you can set up different uh, accounts. At the moment, I've only got uh, one account for the Bitcoin, and I've got no Bitcoins. Somebody send me some coin, please. And I've got no Bitcoin cash. Switch, you are switching the Bitcoin cash wallet. A lot of people originally uh, confused Bitcoin with Bitcoin Cash, so they're just still making sure. It's kind of annoying. I'd rather that not have that message pop up every time. The existing one did that as well. So it does have native support for Bitcoin Cash, and native support for Bitcoin Gold, just like the original. Yep, Dash, native support, and uh, Litecoin. But Ethereum, disappointed it doesn't have native Ethereum support. That's a, that's a real bummer. Um, Litecoin changed the format of the address. There you go. Zcash is fine, uh, but Ethereum is the problem. My Ether Wallet. I've got no problems with my Ether Wallet. It's really good. I use my Ether Wallet to uh, connected to either my Trezor or my Ledger. I use both uh, to do um, things like um, ICOs, initial coin offers, and stuff like that, which use Ethereum contracts. And my Ether wallet uh, actually works quite well. Let me actually demonstrate that. Let's go to my Ether wallet here. And uh, yeah, don't get uh, fished. <laughs> Please bookmark myetherwallet.com. Yeah, make sure you go to the genuine web address. Um, and of course, uh, we can go for the Trezor. Let's see that it actually works with the new Model T, shall we? Come on, it should ask us to uh, connect. Check for device. <laughs> Once again, will it show us the ridiculous... Uh, yeah, unknown device. Come on, like, I can understand that during the setup, but after that, it's just, I, no. No, no, no. Is there some way that they can fix that? I just don't like it. Um, so you just export your public key. It really is uh, quite easy. And there's our addresses there. And, of course, um, we can support. There we go, the Trezor. There you go, Ether uses the M44- dash. There's technical reasons why they call them these bizarre uh, names but of course we can um, go into token balances and things like that and you can actually this is where you see your tokens from initial coin offerings uh, for example but uh, anyway we're in it didn't ask us for my uh, didn't ask for the pin number probably because it's already connected it, yeah it was already connected that's why no wackers we're in like Flynn I've got no ethereum Please, somebody send me some Ethereum. I like in Ethereum. Anyway, like I said, this is where you can check out your token balances for ICOs. Probably the vast majority, if not all ICOs, 
um, these days we use Ethereum contracts uh, and this is well they will show up in here uh, you don't need a wallet it shows up as part of the ethereum contract so if the, th the contracts associated with your particular address here would be uh, show up as uh, token balances here so if you're bought into an ico and they've delivered those new ico coins to you then they'll be attached to this Ethereum contract, and that's how you see them. It, it's not obvious to first-time users of ICOs, um, first-time you know crypto people. It's not obvious at all. But Ethereum, that's one of the great advantages of Ethereum is that it uses this contract-based system. So you can attach almost anything to an Ethereum contract. It's great. So there you go. I can just unlock my wallet, and we're in like Flynn. There's my account address if you want to send me some Ethereum please to my new device I will I'll send myself some ethereum and it works quite well I've never had any uh, problems and here's where you can actually um, not only show all your tokens here like these are all the different you know ICO coins and things like that look at them that that have support that have native support in my ether wallet although if you're buying into a new ECO that um, has its own you know, custom token that hasn't been added to my Ethereum wallet yet, then you just add a custom token and they will tell you on the website what to put in here, the token contract address, the token symbol, and how many decimal places, it might be you know, 18 decimal places or something like that, and token symbol, and you can add them up and bingo, you can now see and operate on your coins using the um, my Ether wallet and the Ethereum contracts. And this is probably one of the uh, reasons that they don't have native support inside the Trezor for this, because it's you know to support all this uh, contract-based stuff is a very complex uh, business. So you know my Ether wallet already uh, does this, but of course it um, is completely secure online because your seeds are still in here, your seeds, your PIN number, everything um, is still within the hardware device itself. This is just basically a you know a web interface to that so it is completely secure you never ever have to type in and don't get fooled into some phishing website where it uh, asks you to enter your seed or your uh, pin number or anything like that into the website you just no don't do that you're being scammed now this is strange i'm trying to collect and connect to my uh ethereum um ledger nano s wallet and it's not letting me in. This is the first time it's done this since the original setup. So I don't know whether there's some sort of conflict happening here between the Model T, which I've still got plugged in and I've still got connected, to my Ether wallet. Very strange. There's nothing showing up on the screen. It's just got my Model T thing. Connect your Trezor to check it. Like, it's supposed to verify your actual receive address. And it, it, it just doesn't work. Anyway, so I'm going to take a chance. I've copied that address there. And unverify. Like, you shouldn't be doing this unverify. But I'm going to, I'm going to risk my 19 bucks um, worth of Bitcoin cash. And amount. There you go. Just verifying on my ledger there and that's the problem with the ledger see it doesn't display the full address on there so technically there can be a man in the middle thing there but you know anyway let's send yep so that's confirmed sending failed all right so i'm actually going to try and transfer some bitcoin this time i do have some bitcoin in my ledger nano s so let's uh go bitcoin there it is receive once again Trezor not connected, which it is, it's ridiculous, show the unverified address, that's just nuts. So we'll copy that, we'll, I won't show you the other screen, 0.001 bitcoins, which is about, you know, 10 bucks Yankee at uh, current prices, and uh, we'll send it to the address, blah, 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 preparing transaction, verifying transaction, confirm transaction on my ledger. Ta-da! Confirm output number two. That's what I want to send. Ah, oh, it cost me. There you go. That's the Bitcoin fee I'm paying for uh, sending this, for those who want to know. 
So I'll just confirm that. Send in succeeded. There you go. So we just have to wait. But the Bitcoin network's, uh, you know, a bit notoriously slow. So anyway, oh, transactions. Here we go. Yes, we got it. Woo, that was quick. Notoriously slow my ass. That came, of course, it hasn't been verified. And bingo, there it is. That took like seconds. Like, uh, yeah, that was like straight away. It is unconfirmed still. But th there you go. That was just you know, almost instant. Um, and once it'll take, uh, the Bitcoin network is kind of like notoriously uh, slow. Uh, it's only, it's deliberately slow because of the way it works. Otherwise, it'd be forking all the time. If it was, they could make it faster. But then the the way the Bitcoin system works, the uh, blockchain works, it'd be splitting all the time and people wouldn't be able to verify and all that sort of jazz. So it's it's deliberately slow. So hence why Bitcoin Cash and, and all the other different million variants of, um, of crypto are a million variants of blockchain, you know, designed to be fast to handle more transactions and that kind of thing. But that went through straight away. And I do like the user interface of the uh, Trezor. It worked quite well, but had a few problems there with the Ledger Nano S again. I don't know whether or not I have to reboot my machine to get my Ethereum working again. I got no idea. But um, yeah, that's <laughs> it's disappointing. Um, as I said at the start, I haven't had any issues actually connecting with this and doing stuff since that original video, but now I've plugged in my Trezor. Maybe there's... I can't see how there can be some conflict between them, but... I, hey, it, it, it's simply not allowing me to connect to my Ethereum wallet. So I don't know what the deal is there. But uh, it worked for Bitcoin. No problems whatsoever. All right, so we'll try and send some Bitcoin as well. Let's just send everything out. There we go. It's going to 9 bucks 60 worth. Fee, nominal, whatever. So expect a confirmation time, 40 minutes. Oh, you know... It's like 20 minutes fee, 0.16. Let's go fast, shall we? Why not? Here we go. Send. All right. So we should see the address pop up. Uh, send. Please connect your device to send coins. It's connected. This is ridiculous. I shouldn't have to connect the damn thing again. Enter my password again. Um, by the way, I have entered the password incorrectly once already. I don't have fat fingers, as I said, but I can imagine that if you do, um, it could be a real problem for you. So there we go. I just connected it again. You probably heard it go... Check for devices. Unknown device. Ah, oh, because we didn't... Is that, is that why? There we go. Connected. Oh, it wasn't connected there. Okay. Jeez, that's tricky. Send. Okay. Maybe that was our problem before for confirmed transaction output on your device. Okay, there you go. See, and it shows you the full address. That's the advantage over the uh, uh, over the ledger that only shows part of the address. So you can actually verify every single digit in there that your address is correct. There's not someone in the middle actually um, sending you a spoof address because that is actually possible. It's a, quite difficult to do because you need a, like a range of addresses or something to do it, but it, technically it's possible. Um, so I'm going to accept that. Green button, confirm action. So you've got to actually hold that down to confirm. Ta-da! We're done. There you go. Successful transaction was successfully sent. Beauty. Now let's see if we can, so there you go, like um, like it shows that today we have received, which is green, and then sent out, which is red, and it gives you a sort of like a timeline, it's quite it's quite nice of what your funds are doing. Um, so let's, let's try that receive, show full address again, please wait, there you go, there you go, so that was the problem, so it looks like we didn't connect over, uh, left hand side over here, so there you go, so don't worry about that issue we had before check the address everything's hunky-dory if we actually have a look at the physical uh, device itself it's still like you know plastic it's got an SD card on the side for future expansion and update and stuff like that that is a potential like way in um, physically 
to the device. Once again, I'll do a uh, tear down of this. Once again, it's like glued or ultrasonically welded shut. I'll have to get the Dremel out. I'll do a separate uh, tear down video of this, um, just playing around with it. Uh, so I don't, it uses, I believe, the, the same or similar STM32 chip, which is different to the Ledger. The Ledger actually uses a true secure chip under NDA with both physical and electrical uh, side channel attack security and stuff like that. So technically, as I said in the previous video, the Ledger Nano S is more secure if you're paranoid about that sort of stuff than the Trezors. But on the flip side, this is closed source so you can't examine the code and the hardware yourself, whereas this is completely open source hardware and software. So technically you can build your own. If you've got the knowledge, you can go through and vet all the software yourself, which I, the firmware yourself, which I'm sure you know a lot of people in the industry are doing, and they've found issues with it in the past. There's been a few vulnerabilities with the Trezor, or the previous Trezor in the past, whether or not there's new vulnerabilities with this one in terms of uh, hardware side channel attacks and or other uh, like you know, software attacks or potentially, but because this has now the keyboard or the keypad built in, technically it's more secure, but as I said, it's only got the 12 seed 12 uh, word recovery seed instead of 24 so i you know I, I don't know but like these are still orders of magnitude more secure than any software wallet or exchange wallet that you're going to have software wallets can be very secure if you set them up in a clean environment but most people don't do that okay so that's why these hardware wallets can save your bacon like that and even if someone physically steals this if i actually power this up now it's going to say wrong pin enter again. Now I believe the Trezor has a limited number of tries, so you can't just try infinitely. It'll lock you out. It's even if somebody steals this, or you lose it, or whatever, you can use your recovery seed sheet and simply get another one, or go to some other uh, wallet. You can do a software wallet if you want that supports the same uh, 12 word recovery seed and you can simply set up a new one and anyone and then this becomes literally useless because your your coins are not stored on these hardware wallets it's not how the blockchain type system works your coins are stored encrypted on the blockchain which is on everyone's computer everywhere um, that has it um, that's doing mining and everything else and verification yet yeah, this generates the code but that's the one-time encryption that's done inside here is not on the blockchain so if somebody steals this and you simply set up a new wallet this becomes absolutely useless to them you know it's it, you can't steal coins out of these things so they're very very secure that's not to say that you know, if you're traveling with one of these through an airport, uh, for example, especially in America, and they take it, you know, there's new laws to take you from this and uh, even possibly even force you to check, you know, to enter your password into these, you know, your PIN number and check and, and do that. But even if you don't give up that information, it's not out of the realms of possibility that they that there is an exploit for this thing physically if somebody has this and you're not able to, uh, disable it in time and move uh, to another wallet, then they could potentially, you know, extract and get in here some way. You know, there's always, nothing's 100% secure in hardware. You can always get in somehow given enough time and effort. But these things are, you know, <laughs> for all intents and purposes, totally secure. So there you go. That's a look at the new Trezor model t is it better than the old one yes it is i think the addition of the screen is better even though the text on it is still quite small if you've got real big fingers you still may have problems entering your pin number and stuff on there um so i still think it's probably smaller than it should be um just yeah i don't know why it can't be a bit i know it you want to fit it in your pocket or whatnot but like i'd rather have like a bigger interface ah the USB-C is going to be more robust I feel a better warm fuzzy actually plugging this thing in and of course you can plug it in both directions no problems whatsoever annoying if you don't have a USB-C cable handy but you know hey that's not really an issue
and it's got a potential upgrade part of the SD card. I'm not sure what's going on there yet. Uh, remains to be seen. Um, you know, I'll leave it up to the crypto experts, the hackers in the industry, to try and uh, find any exploits with this thing. But as I said, if you've got physical security of it, any hardware exploit in this, well, you know, a bit laughable. And the previous one has had several uh, exploits, which they have fixed, by the way, to their uh, credit, of course, um, in the STM32 uh, chip used inside these things and but they've fixed it but once you you know you've got physical possession of it so it you know this thing being exploitable from a hardware point of view is pretty much a moot point really uh when you've got physical security of it now there's actually a very interesting recent hack that just happened or hack in quote marks um that happened with the ledger nano s and what happened is it wasn't actually hacked what happened is that basically they got uh, scammed. You know how I said before, don't buy them from a you know a non-approved seller, for example. Well, this person bought one on eBay, but apparently they had good feedback and everything else. But yeah, right. You know, it's eBay, right? So they bought Legend Nano S on the eBay, and it actually um, came with here's a photo of the uh, recovery seed card that it actually came with, and it looked like it was like a scratch, a scratchy kind of thing, and it. And it had actually the seed number on, you know, behind this panel. And it looked, you know, official and authentic. And the person who bought the Legend Nano S didn't know that it wasn't supposed to come with this. You were supposed to set up the seed uh, yourself on the device and have it generate the seed. So the scam is this Legend Nano S was already pre-set up by the seller. So the seller had that recovery seed. They just generated this fake sheet for it it's absolutely brilliant scam it's great hats off you know <laughs> um, and they generated this fake sheet so the user thought oh okay i th they didn't follow the you know proper instructions and they thought that or online instructions or whatever they didn't know how to set it up properly no you weren't supposed to get this sheet with it so the person knew the, the seller knew the recovery seed and they guess they just waited a bit um and then once uh, you know the person had put they apparently lost their life savings or whatever. They had a ton of uh, coins on there of different uh, types and the seller simply had the recovery seed so they were able to <laughs> load up another, uh, start another wallet and get all those coins and poof, they're gone um, to the scammer. So there you go, watch out for that. But if it's pre-set up like that, you know you're being scammed. Ah, pretty clever. Um, there are probably still some bugs and things like that in it because technically they haven't released it to the public. I got this one early. You can't buy it in the shop yet. But anyway, I think it's a good upgrade. Whether or not it's worth the money, if you just want the cheapest hardware solution possible, just get the Nano S. It, it, it's okay. It's got a few little quirks um, and limitations and stuff, but it's really secure and it's really cheap and like one, like probably half or a third of the cost of the Trezor Model T, but this one's quite nice. I'm a bit disappointed it doesn't have that Ethereum um, support, native support built in, but I do like my Ether wallet for all the contract stuff it can do. Bit of spit. There you go. She'll be right. No worries. Take off all that residue from the nice virgin seal we had on this thing. So, yeah, it's a reasonable upgrade. It's pretty pricey. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> they're making a lot of margin on this hardware, but it comes in a fancy wanky package with your fancy wanky uh, magnet holder thing. It's quite neat. Anyway, there's nothing wrong with the Trezor. I do like the user interface. It's probably the best one out there, I think. Uh, it's definitely better than Ledger, which has separate apps to talk to for each coin, and there's limited how many coins you can put on there and stuff like that. So uh, this is pretty good, but if it doesn't support your coin, then well, you know, doesn't support your coin, does it? So you'll still have to use some other solution. But, hey, they're adding coins. They always say more to come, more to come. But, yeah, they're slow. It's a lot of work to um, properly implement a new coin on these devices. But anyway, it's quite neat. I'll continue to use it. Hopefully they'll get firmware updates and fix some quirks and things like that. But I feel confident in the Trezor, and it's the main one I use. Um, I do use the Ledger Nano S, but I... I like the Trezor a little bit better. So that's neat. So if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and I'll do a teardown of this in a separate video, which I'll link in. And please remember that I do actually have accept donations. So if you like the review, 
maybe send a, like, a Satoshi my way or something. Thanks. Catch you next time. Yeah.